Greetings. It's December 22nd, Friday, and I got a doozy for you. Today we're going to be talking about what's on everyone's mind, Israel. Hope not. What a dreary topic that would be. But we do need to get into uh, a lot of the news that's going on. Uh, as you may know, there is a war going on. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's important. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so I wanted to get with a basic you know, breakdown geographically of Israel and uh, help you understand the conflict that's going on. So here is my beautiful rendering of Israel. There's the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, here is the Sinai. Uh, it's not really the important part. Um, Israel, it's, it's nice. It's, it's actually a lot smaller than this. It's, it's, it can fit right in your hand uh, if you're looking at it. Um, that's a joke, of course. Um, and so here you have West Bank. Here's where you have Gaza. This is where you're having all the problems. And up here, this little thingy is called the Golan Heights. Um, so a little bit of history. Uh, Israel uh, used to be uh, owned by the Ottoman Empire. World War I happens. Um, if you know your history, um, the Ottomans lost. And basically what happened was the British got control uh, of this area after the, the peace that occurred in 1917. And to the victor goes the spoils. Um, the British decided, hey, you know what, we, we have this land, we can do whatever we want with it. And thus the beginning of Zionism. <laughs> uh, you have the Balfour plan and all this. And of course, as time goes by, Israel gets established. A uh, fun little history, um, during the Cold War, uh, the, the Russians were actually the first to recognize Israel as a state. And uh, America, we, we didn't want to be the ones who didn't recognize them. And so we said, oh, yes, we recognize them as well. And then uh, quickly after that, Russia saw how much the other countries didn't like Israel. And so they said, you know what, we, we really, we jumped the gun. We don't recognize them as a state anymore. <laughs> and so the Cold War history... Uh, has kind of fused America and Israel together. Um, and you want to blame the Soviets, but um, they, they definitely help uh, the Arab states uh, fight Israel. But anyway, uh, let's get to 2023, because that's the important stuff. Um, so what's going on here is that you have Palestinians in Gaza are fighting Israel, little sneak attack, how uh, how one of the greatest intelligence organizations didn't see it coming. There's a lot of conspiracies going on because Netanyahu has been dealing with uh, bribery and a lot of loss of his party uh, support prior to October 7th. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to say that they invited th this fight so that they could maintain uh, a bit of a grip. Um, you know, people... People tend to think that that happens a lot, especially in America. Um, you know, if your polling is down, go to war. Um, get get everyone to, to raise those flags and, and, and wave them. Um, a lot of people contribute George W. Bush's re-election to us being at war with Iraq. Um, you had folks like uh, Michael Moore pouting uh, the Wednesday after saying, oh, well, you never lose an election during a war. You know, oh, that's why John Kerry lost was that we were in an active war. No, I, I don't buy it. Um, but uh, getting back to this, uh, so a lot of people talk about the two-party solution. And if you've seen me talk about uh, Ukraine and Russia, th there's one important fact that a lot of people are missing is that if you have a two-party solution, these folks right here in Gaza, what do they get? They get an EEZ, an economic exclusive zone, right here, where they, sorry, right here, where they are allowed to have international shipping and Israel cannot block them. Um, right now you have Israel blocking this area. Uh, I say blocking, they inspect cargo that comes in. They don't allow any uh, uninspected cargo in because that's how Gaza and Hamas gets their weapons. It's just the way it is. And so um, I don't know if you remember a few years back you had a flotilla controversy where you had you know uh, pro-Palestinian people demanding you know uh, aid and everything else to get in unchecked. Usually it's just a, a way to get um, 
usually get weapons in. And so th that's one reason why the two-state solution will never work, is that if Palestine is a true state, Israel has no authority to check what's coming in. In fact, if, if Palestine is a true state, they can, they can make taxes and they can levy taxes. They can buy weapons. They could buy whatever they want, just like any other country can do uh, legally because they, they have that authority. But right now, as a... I don't want to use the, the O word, but, but as, a, as a, um, a vassal area of, of Israel, which is what they are right now, um, they they don't have the ability to purchase weapons. The, it's just the way it is. Now, I do want to get into this little history right here. So in 2006, yes, uh, 2006, Yasser Arafat, uh, he's probably the most famous Palestinian, little short dude, old, he needs to moisturize his face. Uh, <laughs> he ended up passing. Okay, he was the leader of the Palestinian uh, Liberation Organization, or the PLO. Now, when he died, basically there was an election the year after that. And without him being the, the, the head of the Palestinian uh, Liberation Organization, uh, Hamas ended up winning an election, and it caused this major fight between the PLO and Hamas. And there, there was bloodshed. There, there was a mini war that occurred, uh, mostly in the West Bank, I think, but they also, Hamas officially took over Gaza. And since that election, um, now Palestinians have used to have elections, you know, on the regular, but since that election in, in 20, 2007, there hasn't been one. So, you know, we're, we're coming up on almost two decades of no more elections of determining what the people of uh Palestine, Palestinian folks actually want in their leadership. So, with this conflict going on, uh, Hamas has taken Gaza, and more or less uh, the Palestinian Liberation Army or organization, pardon me, still controls most of West Bank. Now, that being said, the the, the largest group inside the PLO, it's a it's a coalition government, if you will. The largest group is known as the Fatwa Party. See if I can get that. There you are. And they have been fighting Hamas constantly, uh, maybe not with bloodshed, but definitely politically for political power. Um, and this gets to a very interesting concept. So the PLO is the one who made the flag that you're seeing everywhere being held by 18-year-old idiots. Uh, it's black, white, green with a triangle that is red. Okay? That's the Palestinian flag. There's no Palestine, but don't tell them that. But the PLO came up with that flag. It is the official flag of the Fatah. Um, it's in their emblem. It, it, it's part of them. They're the, the remaining part of the PLO. It, it's, it's more or less their flag. Yet, Hamas is the one that's at war. Remember, they're the ones who are actually doing all the fighting here with the, the conflict. And Hamas's flag... Uh, they don't really have a flag, but, but you see them a lot with a, a, a green flag with white uh, Arabic. Uh, it's the Shahada. It's kind of the, the statement of Islam. Um, that's the Hamas flag. So why are folks flying the Palestinian flag that is, that is Fatah's? That would be similar. Take this uh, possibility. You have North Korea and South Korea. They don't like each other, but North Korea gets invaded by, let's say, China or Russia or, or something. Or U.S. Why not? North Korea gets in a conflict with some other country, and then people start flying the South Korean flag. It wouldn't make sense. It would be incredibly asinine. Yet that's kind of what's happening with the flags that you're seeing represented uh, in your you know, taglines and profile photos. They're using photos. Uh, flag to support Hamas because all the Palestinians look alike, right? I mean, w with my example, it'd be like, oh, well, they're all Korean, so therefore they all should fall under the same flag. Well, you're forgetting these people hate each other. They're, they're at war. They don't like each other. And so 
uh, I, I find it a little interesting that people are just, oh, it's the Palestinian flag, oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's these guys who are a little bit more moderate than the literal terrorist organization here. So uh, just <laughs> don't support things that, that you don't know about because there's history that, that existed before YouTube was created, okay? Uh, <laughs> so, um, by the way, Merry Christmas to you all. Um, uh, I, I hope the love of Christ is in you. I hope the Prince of Peace will come soon and put an end to all of this nonsense. Um, uh, I pray that you have a wonderful, peaceful Christmas. Um, recognize that there's a lot of people that, that aren't getting peace this Christmas time, uh, whether it's those uh, to the west of the Jordan or those in Ukraine and Russia. Um, but... Uh, my heartfelt prayers for them all, that they all might know Christ and bend the knee. See you guys.